Ian. So, hello everybody. Um, those who don't know me, I'm Ian Small. I'm the branch membership secretary and also the newsletter editor. But I'm here this evening to talk to you about uh, Ghana's wonderful forest butterflies. So over the next hour or so, what I hope to do is to share with you the, uh, it, well, first thing, warm up this cold winter's evening, um, but also share with you the thrill I got at, at seeing these uh, wonderful butterflies and many more in their natural habitat in, in the forests of Ghana. So I'm going to take the, just the first couple of minutes just to give you some, some background context as to where we were and why we, why we were there. Um, then talk very briefly just in general about uh, butterflies of Ghana and, and some of the challenges of their identification. And then the bulk of the talk is just going to be me going through showing you over 100 species of these butterflies, starting with the swallowtails, working through each of the families and ending up with the skippers. So let's let's dive into it. So all of a sudden, my computer isn't working and I'm unable to, there we go. It wouldn't advance the slide. There we go, we're sorted now. So just, just to remind you, well, well where is Ghana? Uh, is, is the first question some of you may have. Um, and it, it, it's in West Africa, essentially due south of the UK and situated just north of the equator. Um, it's a six hour flight or so from, from the UK to get down to Ghana. Um, and you fly into the capital, which is Accra, which you can see highlighted on the south coast here. So why were we there? Um, we were part of a, a private tour organized by, by a, a longtime friend of mine. Um, and they, there was a group of six of us um, who were on this tour specifically with the specific focus of, of finding lots of butterflies. Um, the, the organizer had been there several times before uh, and knew many of the sites. But uh, we were assisted in these endeavors by Two guides and a driver, all provided by a local tour company, Ashanti Tours. So where we were was in the southern part of the country. Uh, and just to orient it before we move to the next slide, um, we never got any further north than, than where this mountain is marked here, uh, just, just on the border with Togo. So if I move to the next slide, you'll see that um, in the top right here. And, and it was up here that we started our, 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 our two weeks. Um, so we visited a couple of sites up here. The first one at Willie Falls, and I'll, I'll show you just a couple of images of each of the sites just to give you a flavor of the habitats. Um, while there, we got up to, to one of the higher sites. This site, Amidzov, was the highest site that we visited, uh, 730 meters. All the other sites are, are, are low lying and we're all uh, between 100 and 200 or, or meters or so. So having spent a few days up, up here in, in this part of the country, we then traveled traveled back down uh, and, and then spent a small amount of time here at, at Bonso Arboretum on the edge of this plateau. Um, we would have stayed longer, but unfortunately the weather broke. And although that's a very good butterfly site, we, we only saw a, a small number of species there in, in, the, in the few hours we had before the rains set in. Um, but we then moved to the the main sites of our of our time there, which were this site here at Babiri Forest, uh, at Babiri Forest and Butterfly Sanctuary. Uh, Babiri Forest is 21 square miles, which is mind boggling in itself, uh, but 21 square miles of, of virgin semi deciduous tropical forest in the on in part of it is uh, is this butterfly sanctuary where, where we were based. Um, if I tell you that that one site has recorded 450 species of butterfly, that might give you an idea of why we were in these areas. Um, obviously the UK only has what 50 something species. If you were to add up all the species of every European country, and I'm including the UK in that, you also get to about 450. So that gives you an idea of just how special uh, somewhere like Babiri is. From there, we then moved down to um, this final site, at, uh, a forest at Quibina Sam. Um, so all these sites were forested. Um, they varied slightly in the vegetation uh, and, and the density of the vegetation on, on each of the sites. So there, there, were, there were differences in the butterfly species that were present at, at, at each of them. So um, 
in terms of what the weather was like, I say, apart from when it was raining, it was very hot and humid. So the average daily temperature was about 35 centigrade. Now, after the UK's last summer, that sounds quite cool to some people, but but believe me, it's uh, when it's when it's humid as well. It it, it really is, um, it's quite tiring at times, but very rewarding. So just a few images of what the sites looked like. Um, the, the the first site in, in on the northeast, close to the Togo border, was Willie Falls. So this is a picture of just what the falls looked like. Uh, those are 80 meters high to give you a scale. Uh, the cliffs are covered in, in uh, fruit bats uh, and, and there were a few thousand flying around in the middle of the day. So it was quite an impressive sight. But I, I realized and putting this top together, I didn't actually take any photographs of, of, of the tracks leading through the forest. So I've included the one on the right of, of one of the streams, but it gives you a, a feel for what the vegetation is like you know, in, in that forest on, as you walk through the forest on the way up to the, the clearings around the, the waterfall at the end. Bonsu Arboretum was the next site, next forest site we visited. And as you'd expect for a name like Arboretum, there's a slightly more formal layout to, to part of the site uh, on the left hand side here. But then the rest just, just meanders its way up through up, up the side of a gentle hill um, and, and, and is um, essentially just a forested track with, with a, a, a mixture of, of tree densities, so light and shade, um, various patches throughout. Now this was Bobiri, the, 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 the main butterfly sanctuary site. Um, and under Bobiri, there's essentially one long sandy track that runs through. There's, there's a few side paths, but most of our time was spent on this, on this long track, just, just walking to and fro. And as you can see, there's a complete mix of, of bright sunshine to, to deep shade under the bamboo here or, or under trees later on. Um, and, and the tracks are, are very sandy. Um, and at Quibina Sam, similar mix, similar mix. But in, um, if anything, the uh, patches of shade were, were sometimes darker. Um, but to, as I said, the, the, the trees and the plants were slightly different in Quibina Sam. Um, and as a consequence, we saw a few species there that we hadn't seen earlier. So, Ghana's butterflies. As I said, at, at Bubiri, um, uh, they've recorded almost 450 species. Well, the, the entire Ghana list at the moment is about 930, which is, is, is a staggering number. Now, now, I'd never been to Ghana before, so that's a pretty daunting challenge when it comes to identification and trying to work out what you're looking at. Um, and the reality is there's only one out of print reference book um two volume work at that but but still out of print um and unfortunately even that doesn't illustrate all the females uh, of, of many of the species so i was able to pull the species list off the internet and then did, did a trawl of trying to work out trying to find images uh, of, of a lot of these and realized that only about 30 percent of the species actually have, have pictures on the internet now this is something you know we take it for granted that you can look something up and find find pictures and all sorts of information uh, unfortunately that's not the case in ghana um, however our guides did have a copy of the reference book with them and uh, as i say some of our colleagues were had been to ghana before uh, and, and so we were able between us to identify ultimately everything that that, that we had seen there. Um, there are complications, as I say here, there, there's mimicry between species and all sorts, which just adds to the fun of it. Um, but again, just to give you a feel, we were only there for two weeks, some of which was spent traveling, of course. Uh, but from our photographs, my wife and I, between us, were able to identify just over 200 species from that two weeks. Um, and between the, between the six of us on, on, on the trip, uh, that rose to 250 species. So really quite, quite staggering numbers for a, for, a, for a short visit. So that's, that's the introduction. Um, so the rest of this presentation is just going to really be a celebration of those butterflies, um, working through family by family. And starting off with the the Pilonidae, the, the the ladies sword tails and swallowtails. So you know we, we think of the Pilonidae in our region as actually just the swallowtails, but the the family is broader in in, in tropical regions. So as you'll know from the name swallowtail, the, the, these are usually large, fast flying insects, and they very rarely keep still even on the ground. Uh, so sometimes getting good images of them can be a challenge, but. Uh, as you'll see, we've got some nice ones. 
So I'm going to start off with this, and this is uh, Jaffrey Mangalanis, the, the Angola white lady, you know, and, and what a stunning underside this butterfly has. Um, and what I'm going to do is just spend a second or two here just with, on this slide explaining the information that I'm including on all the slides for you. So I'm going to, I mean, you will see that I include the, the Latin name for everything, but I also include in brackets after it an English name. Now, that English name is, is what I believe to be the most common English name for that species, but in many cases there are multiple. Uh, and, and so it, just searching on the basis of an English name doesn't always give you what you're looking for. The other thing I'm including is, is indicative wingspans for each of these species, because I recognize that you know, just seeing a picture of something in abstract, you don't really have a feel for how, how big an insect it is that, that you're looking at. So um, again, just to put this in context for, you know, for if you're not familiar with thinking about wingspans for butterflies, then th this, this, this butterfly wingspan of 65 to 75 puts it pretty much on a par with, with a red admiral. Uh, Red Admiral um, is, you know, the quoted figures are 60, uh, 67 to 72, so very much overlapping. Uh, so that gives you the scale for this. Um, you, you'll see that we have larger butterflies coming up and also smaller ones. So just again, just for scale, um, you know, our, our purple emperor is, is 75 to 84 millimetres, and, and the UK swallowtail has a wingspan of between 80 and 90. Millimeter. So that's the biggest we get in, in the UK. Going down the other way, common blue would be about half the size of this one on the screen at about 35 millimeter wingspan. And our small blues, our smallest butterflies, average out about 25 to 30 millimeter wingspan, although one or two of them can, can be smaller than that. So that, that just gives you, you know, some information about what you'll see on the screen in front of you as we go forward. So this next species uh, is, is a turquoise spotted sword tail. Um, and, and you will see how it gets its name from those very long tails. Um, a very attractive butterfly, but as I've hinted, you know, they, they, they don't keep still very often. Um, and so to get the picture of the upper side, you, you really have to sort of capture it as it's, flick, as it's moving its wings, uh, walking around, in this case, top right, taking salts from, from the ground. This was the most common of the swallowtails that we saw, the citrus swallowtail. Uh, and and even, even though there's no tails on, 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 on this, this, this is a very broad wingspan. It's 10, 10 centimeter wingspan on this. But I, I particularly like the, you know, the, 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 the intensity of the blue in the lunules on the underwings. It, it really shone in, in the light. Um, so when you saw a reasonably fresh specimen, it, it was delightful. But this next species is even bigger. So this, this the, the Western Emperor swallowtail, you know, it boasts a wingspan of up to 12 centimeters. So, so we really are talking large here. Uh, and again, what a glorious underside this, this species has. And in this case, there are tails on the butterfly, uh, but the tails are un unlike the swallowtail where, where the tails are long and, and pointed. Then, then the, the tails here are, are, are rounded um, and, and, and fit in with the, just the shape of the hind wing, as you can see, it's sort of scalloped. Um, so it all it, it makes a, just just a delightful image. I think this particular butterfly has only got one of those tails left, but uh, unfortunately, that was the the best I could do. And I've included this picture just simply to give you an indication of the some of the challenges of identification. There are three different species of swallowtail on this slide, uh, differing in the the breadth of that broad green blue band across the across the wings. Uh, the undersides are essentially identical. There are minor differences between them, but uh, at first glance they look the same. So oftentimes, you know, identification relies on being able to take photographs and and then working working things out afterwards. Unless you really are very lucky and get a very good view in the field and are already sufficiently knowledgeable to be able to assign a name to something. So that was the, the swallowtail. So moving on to whites and yellows. Um, there are many, many more species of those um, in, in Ghana than we have in, 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 in the UK, for example. There's about 50 species. Uh, and, and 
often they're they're really very boldly marked um, and, and are really quite 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 lovely to look at. Um, and often the the females are are, are darker than, than the males, as you see. But this this first species to show you, it, it just you look at it and you as somebody based in the UK, you think, oh, that's a bit like a like a brimstone. Um, it, it's obviously the same, similar sort of size, shape, and, and just general jizz about it. Um, but, but this is the, the African migrant. And in, in Asia and Africa, there are many very small yellows called grass blues, um, and, and they can be quite confusing to, to differentiate. Um, and and they, they largely differ in the, the just the the the, the precise markings on, on on the underwings. Um, they all, they nearly always sit with their wings closed. So although there are differences on the upper side, uh, you rarely are able to use those for identification purposes. So the the most common of the ones we saw was the one on the top left, the forest grass yellow. Um, but the, the the one in the middle at the bottom, the the, the common grass yellow, is, is the one that's much more boldly marked. Uh, I've included the one on the top right just to show that the, as these butterflies age, they, they can lose the colour, uh, they can lose the yellow, and, and also that the, the underwing markings can also fade. So unless you're looking at uh, relatively fresh specimens, it can make identification even more of a challenge. But I mentioned that some of these uh, whites can, can, can really be beautiful and, and I, I very much use that description for for these albatrosses. Um, they have a you know this lovely dotted border with with sort of these round black dots sort of circling the, both the forewing and, and and the hind wing, um, and the, the the particularly the intensity of the color here in 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 the common albatross just just really sets that off. It's really, really, really attractive to butterflies. But they, I think the albatross name probably comes from the fact that the four wings are really quite long relative to the hind wings. But these uh, caper whites, in this case the Bellinois calypso, um, are you know indicative of of, of many of, of the whites that you see in Ghana, and in, in just how how beautifully marked they are. Um, and also that uh, the female on the left here, you can see the 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 all the the, the black uh, appearing on the forewings, which which uh, is not present on on the males. And the females in general have a much darker ground colour on the underside of of the hind wings relative to the males. But it, it, this this caper white is, is is beautifully marked. But the next one, the markings are even bolder. Um, and this is uh, the forest caper white, Bellinois theora, um, and and the just the, the the intensity of the black markings on this butterfly really set off the, in contrast with the, the yellow and and the white, making it really very striking, and and, and I love the the yellow and black checkered border. On, on, on the hind wing and, and, and even on the, the forewing of the, of the female here. That, that really is a, a lovely butterfly. And around the world, you'll find lots of different orange tips. And uh, we had, uh, this was the most common of the orange tips that we saw, the, the round winged orange tip. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit smaller than the orange tip that we get in the UK. And as you can see, the wing shape is, as the name would suggest, a bit rounder. Than, than is the case for our own, um, but you see the orange on the on the forewing um, of the male, um, but absent from the forewing of the female, similar to the way that, that, that it appears in in our own UK species. But the undersides are completely different from anything we are familiar with, and 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 both sexes have these strong orange bars on the underside of the forewing, even the female, which lacks it on the upper side. That's quite unusual. And these are more whites, uh, which actually include the name dotted border in their, in their English name. So they're um, 
particularly th this one, the, the Western Dotted Border, looks very similar to, to one of the albatrosses I showed you earlier. Uh, but but this, in this case, lacks the, 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 the black dots around the underside of the forewing. Um, and this one, the Common Dotted Border, it, it says common in the English name, but this, I think we only saw one or two of this species. In it, and it was uh, you know, really quite striking. It's quite almost gaudy colouring. Uh, on the underside of that, the, the, the contrasts between the, the wide black border, you know, th through the yellow to the, the really bright orange at the leading edges there, quite, really quite striking. And you'll probably recognise these as as wood whites. Um, uh, the, the the preferred English name for most of them is is flip flop uh, in, for the Ghanaian species, and that it simply just reflects the the the, the way that they fly uh, as they go through the, the, the forest. Um, and the species are differentiated you know, with difficulty is the first thing to say, uh, but essentially by the, the, the wing shapes. So the most common one, flip-flop flip here, the Alcesta, the wings are a bit rounder than, than the other species, um, but also the, the underwing patterns vary slightly, both in color and in the, the, this, the patterning of the, the green, uh, line so that you know, they're relatively random with Alcesta. They're more clustered in, into stripes with, with Medusa, the Western flip flop. But by the time we get down to Hybrida here, then they're really very well organized into, in, in, into, into stripes at that point. And the, the, the last of the whites that I'll, uh, I'll share with you is just one of the Nephronia, one of the, the vagrants. Um, when we saw two or three of these, um, but I've included it just because they are one of the families of whites that have really bright green eyes, uh, which really, particularly in, in the male here at the top left, you see that bright green eye really stands out against the pale butterfly. And now, this is one of many species which have different colour forms, and, and in this case it's the female which has different colour forms. So that the main color form is, is, called a, is a white morph. So which the lower left, you can see that the white morph female um, and much more black on the underside. And top right is, is the upper side of that. And you can see that the black on the, on the four wings as well as these bright orange spots. But there's also a yellow morph of this, uh, which so the, the ground color is much deeper yellow. And then those orange spots get carried through to the undersides of the wings. So moving on, the, the blues and hair streaks. Um, we, there are many, many species in Ghana, but most of them are in, in drier habitats than the ones we visited. So we, 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 I think in the end, we saw about 30 different species and I'll, I'll show you a, a representative sample here. Uh, many of these, some of these first ones are tiny. And this is about the size of a, of a small blue. Um, it's called the Western Marble. Um, one of, several of these butterflies that you, you really only see early morning or late afternoon. Uh, they spend the bulk of the day up in the forest canopy. Uh, so they only come down low enough to see uh, at, at either end of the day. And I, I just like this photo with uh, the, the raindrop at the end of the leaf, sort of catching the reflections of the, the trees round about. Similarly, the, the lip tenor on the left here is also tiny. Um, and, and with exactly the same behavior I just described. Um, the, the harlequin on the right, and I thought when I first saw it that it, it looked quite poorly um, and, and was heavily damaged until I realized that all those tiny black dots and speckling is actually part of the underwing pattern, just to, just to break it up, um, which again, it, it, I'm not familiar with any other butterfly that, that uh, exhibits that sort of um, patterning. Um, the behavior is unusual here. This is a female and it's egg laying on, on, on actually a, a, a fallen tree trunk, um, which, which you might think is a bit odd, but the, the caterpillars, in fact, feed on, feed on lichen in this species, which was uh, something new for me. Now I've come across that in butterflies before. This species goes by the wonderful English name of clenches on off, and, and I hope you can see how that name might be derived just from these two images. Um, the, the contrast is really quite startling. Um, 
and I think now you see it, now you don't, it's, it's potentially another name. Um, and presumably that, that's the, the basis of this, uh, just to evade predators by, by folding the wings over like that. But, but I, again, I'd never seen a butterfly deliberately hold its wings forward like that and hold it. Um, again, most unusual behavior. So I'm assuming it, it's, it's, a, it's a survival tactic rather than just a signaling one. Um, although signaling is, is certainly possible, can't be ruled out. And this was the most common of the blue butterflies that we saw. Uh, unfortunately, nearly always with its wings closed, so we couldn't actually see the blue. Uh, but uh, and, and, and often they were on the ground taking salt. So to get this one just perhaps a little bit higher to get a better view was, was lovely. And this is obviously a very fresh one on, on the left, but a really very, very bold set of markings on the underside there. Um, and, and that lovely deep purpley blue on, on the open mail there. What you may, I hope you can see on your screen is that on the tail of, of each of the hind wings, there are three tails. Um, so this, this, this particular family of butterflies, the Anthini, all have three tails on, on each hind wing. And this little chap really is tiny, pale babel blue. Um, but again, just, just, just posed beautifully for me and, and, and appears quite fresh. But just, I was taking just with the, the subtle markings on, on, on the underside here, you know, the, just the range of greys and the, and the intensity of the markings. And then obviously with the, the, the bright blue eye spots just at the tip, just setting it off. But, but tiny bit lovely. And, the, and here the uh, common zebra blue on the left is much more broadly marked. Um, really very, very bright and, and, and contrast here. You can see where the name zebra comes from with that. And again, very, uh, very clear eye spots at, at the tail of the hind wing there. Whereas the little chap on the right, um, you know, it is a blue, um, even though it's effectively, it looks like it's imitating one of the whites that I showed you earlier. Um, very similar patterning to, to the albatross species, for example, that I, I showed you, except this is half the size and, and, and has tails coming out of its hind wings and, and, and blue eye spots. Um, so I found it unusual that, that there were, you know, um, that there seemed to be quite a few um, of these Lycenids that were essentially white. Um, and this next slide uh, shows you another family of them, the, the, the so-called ginger whites. And, and these are you know, really delightful little butterflies. Um, you know, very, very light and airy um, and, and, and not at all uncommon. Um, so there are four different species here. Um, the one on the top left was felt to eye as the only one with that, with, with, with the, the sort of, darker coloring the, the orange in here. Um, top right is the only one that doesn't have tails on, on the hind wing. So th those two are easier to identify. The ones below uh, differ um, in, in the intensity of the markings around the outside and also in, in, in the, 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 color, the general color of the hind wing. The, the light ginger white really is a, a lighter color than the common ginger white. But it's the sort of thing you realise only afterwards when you're looking at your photographs and uh, you, you don't really pick it out in, in, when you're looking in the field. And this was the nearest we got to, to anything that resembled what we would think of as a copper. Um, the, well, clearly the underside is very different uh, from uh, any, anything that we would think of as a copper. Um, but if you got the light right on this, then you would see a, a, a just a, a blue a blue sheen a blue iridescence on on the upper side of these butterflies, but I wasn't able to capture that in the photograph. And more often than not, the butterfly was as, as on the right. They're just sitting on the ground, taking salts from the ground, uh, and, and and very rarely did we see it with its wings anything other than closed. Now this this chap um, goes by the wonderful. Um, English name of coffee playboy um, and Deuterix Lorisona. Um, but it, it's the English name gives the, gives the behavior away completely. Um, it behaves like a playboy that, that's actually souped up on, on, on several coffees. Um, if the sun's out, this chap's going to be buzzing around um, 
and and will disappear completely as soon as the, the sun disappears. But I, I was, you know, the, the intensity of the orange on the upper side here on the wings and, and this orange tip to the abdomen, uh, really striking. But when it closes its wings, it's hard to believe it's the same butterfly. They are so completely different, the upper side and underside. And you can see just from the, the, the body of this, just how powerful the muscles are on this and gives you an idea of just that it's built, to, built for speed, this one. In contrast, this isn't built for speed. Uh, this is just one of the most stunning butterflies. Um, it's not big, uh, but it is absolutely gorgeous. More often than not, we saw it either in flight or with its wings closed. Um, and, and obviously, if sitting with its wings closed, it's still the most gorgeous thing to look at. Uh, but we were treated, I think, twice overall in the holiday to see the top side. Uh, and on this occasion, it clearly was a, just an absolutely fresh specimen with those, that, 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 all these little white hairs just, just over, the, over the blue scales. Uh, and so I, I, I'm thinking that this really is, you know, almost certainly a fresh specimen, uh, opened its wings, it's soaking up the sun, um, possibly even before its, it, it, its first flight or before its second flight. You know, it, it, it really is that fresh. There's not a scale out of place on that. And you know, the intensity of the blue, is, is was just stunning and obviously set off by these wonderful tails uh, that this species has. And this is what's called the large fairy hair streak. And there, there are other similar butterflies around. So the, the, the Labona fairy hair streak looked underside very, very similar, although the, the, the forewing was much darker towards the tip. Um, and the, the tails seemed proportionately longer in this species. Um, but we never saw the top side to be able to comment on that. Um, but this particular butterfly is slightly smaller um, than, than the, uh, the previous one. Uh, so whether the tails are the same length and just look longer uh, is, is difficult to comment. But the one below um, goes by the English name of common false head. Um, and you can see it's a different species, just, just, just from the shape of the wings, they're much rounder here, but the general pattern uh, and, and concept behind the design, to put it that way, is pretty much the same. Uh, and, and, and the name just gives the clue to why, why are there butterflies like this? And it's because they have this false head. Um, they all have eye spots um, and, and tails that from an angle to a predator may look like the eyes and the antennae and forelegs of, of an insect. And usually the head is pretty obscure and hidden a lot of the time in these insects. So a predator is much more likely to attack this end uh, and cause some wing damage, after which the butterfly can essentially fly away undamaged. So moving on to the, uh, the nymphalids. Now, the, the nymphalids, there are lots of different families of, of these, and uh, I'll try and show you some representatives of, of each of the families. Uh, there, there, there's a huge variety of shape and color here. Um, and many of them are attracted to, to rotting fruits. Now you'll be familiar with that, with the behavior of some of our, our nymphalids, you know, uh, Red Admiral and the like. Um, so our guides were using a mixture of uh, mango and beer uh, as a bait, which you, you will see on some of the photographs as uh, that smeared on some leaves um, and, and the butterflies coming down and taking that. Um, but, um, you know, You'll also know that, that many butterflies like things that are rather more noxious than that. Um, you, you've probably heard of stories of people uh, tempting down um, purple emperors with all sorts of uh, noxious uh, fish-based products. Um, and believe it or not, we were quite surprised that our guides turned up from, back from the market one day with, with some crab. And uh, lo and behold, crab turned out to be irresistible to, to many of these species. So you, you, unfortunately, you will see lots of crab in the photos that follow. So one thing just to point out in advance is, as we go through these, that some of these um, butterflies uh, exhibit um, an iridescence in the leaves and so look quite different depending on the light. Uh, and so I've tried to capture them where that iridescence is showing just to show you the, the differences. But I'm going to start off with some of these uh, the, the Charaxes family. Um, 
There is one Chiraxi is based in Europe, that you are not based in Europe, but that you can see in Europe, and that's the two-tailed Pasha. Um, but down in down in Africa, there are there are many different species, and they are all very intensely marked on on, on the underside. They're they're essentially um, fruit feeding uh, insects. They'll visit. They'll they'll take much of their their sugar and and, and liquids from fruit and rotting fruit rather than visiting flowers. Uh, so so the behaviour pattern is quite different. And I say more often than not, they'll they'll be living in, up in the canopy, but only come down to the ground for for you know things like that. So you will see that these two species that the English names include blue. Uh, we unfortunately we never saw the upper side uh, of the wings of these bonds, uh, so we didn't couldn't see the the blue. In contrast, this, although this is very much a faded specimen, as you can see from the um, the, the, the underside on the right, uh, this particular species was engrossed with with its piece of crab. Um, so this is the common blue Charaxes, uh, and was just opening and closing its wings quite slowly. So was able to capture, you know, the, uh, an image here with with the wings wide open. Now this species, the bamboo Charaxes, on the other hand, was really quite happy to open its wings on a regular basis, uh, and was was probably the most common of the Charaxes that we saw, uh, and just really startlingly bright colouring. That bright orange contrasting with the, the black uh, in the male on the left, uh, and, and the female with, as you'd expect, um, most more subdued colouring, uh, but but still very attractive. And the undersides of of these are are really beautifully marked, um, and you know when you look at the undersides, you're actually better able to to appreciate and see the the tails. Uh, so there there are a couple of tails uh, in this species. Um, so they, they really are sort of delightful insects, and certainly where we were, they were not at all uncommon. This chap is one of the the bigger Charaxes, the flame bordered Charaxes, and uh, we had we had an interesting encounter with this guy because uh, my wife and I were walking up the forest track, uh, and he, I assume it's a he, uh, came down and uh, basically almost hovered in front of us. And then started zipping around uh, and, and looping around us at, at an incredible speed. Um, you know, must have must have looped us at least a dozen times. Um, I can only assume that he was checking us out to see if we were uh, sweaty enough and, 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 and otherwise obnoxious spelling enough to be attractive to him. Um, we failed the test, um, and so he he gave up. But he'd obviously tired himself out by. By zipping around us so fast, so he just went off to the side of the track, sat down on this twig, opened his wings, and was perfectly content for us to then walk up and and, and have a really good look at him. That uh, what a what a gorgeous blue sheen there is to the, to the forewing there, contrasting with the the bright orange uh, tail, tail tail part of the wings, and the underside is uh, you see these these bars of red and orange. Similar colour patterns on these two, um, uh, and I, again, I've included these you know, to draw attention to the, the Brutus on the right, the white barred Charaxes. Um, what, what struck me was the colour of the proboscis. Again, I hope you can see that coming through on your screens, because the proboscis is bright orange uh, in exactly the same colour as the, as the ground colour of the, the, the parts around the head and, and the front part of the, of the wings there. The quite, Quite fascinating how these things evolve. Now, much smaller um, are these two Charaxes, and the green Charaxes on the left is, 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 was, was also quite interesting. Green butterflies are, are, are unusual anyway, um, and, and this particular species has a, it has a particular grass green to it uh, that, that's quite unique. But I think even more unique is if you can see the antennae on this, the antennae are also the same color of green as 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 the wings. Uh, I, again, I've never come across that sort of uh, matching in a butterfly before. And 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 funny, finally, for the Charaxes, the, the the one on the right, the Savannah Charaxes, is only about the size of a common blue. But just what wonderful marking there is on the underside there. Um, and, and there's a hint of, of, of blue spots on the top, on the top side there, but unfortunately we never saw it. 
So it's just a shame that these two species would, were only coming down to the crab and we'd, we never saw them in a more, uh, more photogenic environment. Exhibiting the same sort of behaviour and also attracted to, to things smelly was, was this pala, Usher's pala. And again, just, just striking uh, upper side pattern with that white bar running into the, those really bright orange tail parts. But the underside got really finely stippled and, and those, with those lines all the way through it. Um, again, really attractive butterfly. As was this, um, this moving away from the, the, this African map wing was again, quite a common butterfly. More often than not, we'd see it sitting on the ground uh, with its wings open like this, as you can see on the left. Um, just every so often you would, you would be able to catch one with its wings open as in top right there. And you can see that the underside is as attractive, if not more so than, than, than the underside, but really lovely butterflies. The most common butterfly we saw at Babiri was this one, uh, the African beak, Libithia lambdaca. Uh, so it's a relative of the nettle tree butterfly of Europe, which is also a Libithia. Um, but when we first arrived uh, at Babiri, there must have been tens of thousands of these taking salts from the tracks. Um, by the time I took the photograph on the bottom right there, uh, about three days later, the numbers had fallen to about 10% of where they had been before. So you can see that there's several hundred just in that image there. Uh, so you, you, can, you can only imagine uh, what it was like earlier. Uh, but, but to walk through literally clouds of, of these butterflies to go down the track uh, was, was quite an amazing experience. And I was just obviously grateful they weren't locusts. So the next family, um, the, the gliders. Um, Interesting that there's a variety of colors and shapes here. Um, um, and, and in almost every case, the female is completely different from, from the male. Um, the, this first glider, the angular glider, you, you, you can see the male and female, they look very similar apart from the, the, the swapping of the ground colors. Uh, but when you move on to this, this yellow glider, um, that isn't the case at all. And, and that yellow, the male yellow glider is, you know, it was a stunning insect. It, it, it's, it's quite an unusual mustardy color um, and, and quite unusual. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing any other butterfly with that sort of coloring at all. And as you can see, the female is, is completely different um, in everything but size and shape. And there are, there's a series of white gliders. Um, and this is the common white glider. And, and as you can see, only the male is, is, uh, is, is, is generally white with, with, with some patterning around the tails of the wings. Um, the female, as, as you can see top right, is generally darker but with, with these white bars. But the, the patterning between the two is, is generally similar. Two different species here. Um, the, the western glider on the left, which you see is very similar to the, to the previous species, the common white glider, um, but there's, there's much more dark marking around the margins. But in the same family, still in the Simothoi family, uh, the common red glider on the right is, is, is chop and cheese different. It's hard to believe they are, they are both Simothois, and uh, same with much of the, the ones I've just been showing you. Um, so there were, there were actually two or three different species of red glider uh, that, that were flying around. Uh, we, we only managed to identify and, or, or pick out two of them, although some of our colleagues saw the third species. Um, so just before I show you the second species, I'll just point out part of the differentiation, which is the, 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 the black markings on the tail of the hindwing here. You, you'll see it's, it's sort of chevron shapes here. Uh, it's dots on the on the end of the forewing, but chevrons on the, on the hindwing. Um, if I move to the next species, uh, which is Mabil's red glider, you'll see that uh, we, we essentially got dots all the way around the margin. Uh, the the distinction in the field was really quite challenging, and and for worn butterflies, um, it, it really wasn't easy at all to to pin them down one way or or the other. But what's striking with this species is, you know, 
the butterfly on the left here is the female of the one on the right. Um, and you look at them and you think, really? Um, they really could not get more different if you look at them like this. Um, even you know the way they hold the wings is is completely different, um, and obviously the, the coloring and the patterning is completely different. But the next slide shows you the undersides, and and when when you see the undersides, all of a sudden they hold the wings in a similar way, and you can see that the, the wing shapes and and the the underlying patterning um, is is essentially the same between the two, uh, albeit that the ground color is completely different. So we move on to the next family, and this this next family are the, 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 what's called the Pseudocrea. So this is a family of mimics, uh, and they're all mimics of, of yet a further family of, 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 of butterflies called the Acreas, which are essentially African and African Asian in distribution. So these are mimics of those, um, and these these are again can be really attractive little butterflies. Um, the acreas that they're mimicking have very long forewings, so you'll see that uh, reflected here in, in, in these mimic species. Um, and this first one I'm showing you is one that occurs in two different morphs. Um, so uh, this, this morph, Morphuritus of the common frost acrea, you'll see it has these stripes uh, on, on the outside part of the forewings, uh, albeit different colors between the male and female, and they're related the same species but a different color different morph morph striata lacks those stripes on the outer side uh, but the, the general pattern elsewhere is the same although the the color intensity and the intensity of the stripes differ but but all four of these uh, uh, are just just beautiful to look at Lo lovely lovely insects and this this gaudy little chap is is, is also uh, um, a pseudocrea, the, the in, strange English name of incipient false acrea. Uh, but as you can see, this this chap was particularly attracted to the to the mango bait, mango, perhaps it was the beer part, uh, mango and beer bait on 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 the leaves. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's the only place we we got him to come down to. Common throughout Asia and Africa are neptis species, uh, in, going by the English name of sailors. And there must be dozens of, of, of these across Asia and Africa. Um, they all fly on relatively stiff wings um, and, and often sit with their wings flat, as, as you can see on, on this. And, and the individual species are uh, you know, identified just by the particular patterns of, of, of the white uh, or cream against uh, th those dark backgrounds. Um, Every so often you'll manage to see one uh, with its wings raised, uh, and then you realize that the underside patterns are at least as, as attractive, if not more so, uh, than the upper side patterns. But because of the complexity of, of, of the, these, this patterning, then the, these are species that, because there are so many different ones around, that you really do need to sort of sit down and look at photographs afterwards and, and work out very carefully what it is you've seen. This species I found absolutely fascinating. So it's called, the English name is guinea fowl. And you, the, the, the upper wing pattern on the right um, is very reminiscent of, of, of the bird, the guinea fowl. Uh, the underside is that lovely bright orange color. Um, and you hope you can see, but the proboscis is also the orange that matches the, the underside. Um, what struck me here was that we tend to think of the underside of butterflies for camouflage. Um, that can't be the case here because it's the underside that, that's brighter than the upper side. So what the what the logic is here, or what 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 the uh, the biological rationale for this is, I, I I really don't know, but I'd be fascinated to find out. And as for this, all six of these are the same species. So. Six different color forms, six different patterns of the same species, the common commander. Um, again, the, the how this arises and how these have not separated out into different species uh, is, is beyond my understanding, at least. But the concept of having six completely different forms of the same butterfly 
is 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 just staggering to me. And and it's not as if they're just slightly different. They are completely different in many cases uh, in terms of the, the ground color pattern. You can see that the, the actual markings are the same, uh, but the ground color is so variable uh, between them. Um, and and so, see, some of these are just, just, just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous insects. So moving on, the, the nymphs is the next grouping I want to go through. Um, this was the most common that we saw, the Aterica galene, the, the forest glade nymph. They, these were really quite common, but, but more often than not, they were quite damaged by the time we saw them. Uh, very few were fresh. So, so these two here are among the, the only fresh ones that we saw. But again, lovely, clear patterning, patterning on these. But what's again, what's striking is that it's the female that's got the brighter colour. Um, there's more white than, than the orange is on the upper side of the female rather than the, rather than the duller male. So this is something I'll come back to in the next few slides with other species. It, it struck me as really quite odd. So I'm getting on now to the, um, the butterflies I mentioned earlier that show iridescence on the upper, on the upper wings. Now the iridescence is, seems to be limited only to the males, never the females. Um, and so they, the males and females tend to be completely different in, the, in their appearance. Um, common nymph on the top here, you can see that, that, that lovely um, blue iridescence just catching the sun um, and the pattern on the female just dropping trees completely different. The, the male on the left without the sun is just a dull brown with very, very few discernible markings. So it becomes a, very difficult to identify things uh, unless you get the light right and unless you can see the underside of these at the same time. You can see the, the nymph below, the Veronica nymph, the, the, the iridescence is, is, is a, there's no purple there. It, it, it's all blue rather, rather than the bluey purple. Some of these nymphs don't have uh, any iridescence. You can see the top left, the, the friendly nymph, but it, it's almost like a fritillary in its, in its markings and colorings. Um, but again, another, another iridescent one underneath the, the dark nymph, you can see how much darker the, the, the tip of the forewing is there. Um, but again, the blue iridescence just catching through. Unfortunately, I, I didn't get a, a, a better angle on that to, to see it better. But you can see that the undersides of these vary quite significantly between species, which is essential in order to identify them. And the females are, you know, completely different in every case. Now, moving on to the, the biggest grouping, which is the foresters, uh, which are split into to, to two different genus, the Viberia and the Euphedras. So starting with the Viberias here, um, the, again, we've got this lovely iridescence on, on, the, on the wings of the male, but this time it's limited just to that very first, very front part of the wings. Um, and not just blue, which is really what you see in, 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 in life. But when you look at the photographs, you can see that there's actually a purple uh, iridescence, which the cameras pick up as well. Um, in the light of the forest in your eyes, doesn't, doesn't really pick these things up. Uh, but again, the female, completely different. Um, and the underside of the very clear white spot to aid the identification. The shining blue forester, you can see how that gets its name, can't you? The, the, the iridescence just glows over, over all of that wing and, and a very different underside with the, uh, the, the black markings there. No iridescence on this one, and another more fertility or like, like type patterning, but again, chalk and cheese to female. But this, this one I was able, this is the same, the two photographs on top of the same butterfly, um, just taking a few seconds apart, one with its wings wide open and the other as it flexes its wings. And you can see the, the, the lovely blue iridescence just, just lighting up those, what would otherwise be, be dull brown stripes going across the wings. This next Biberia, I'll start with the, looking at the, the photographs below the underwing pattern. So you can see that it's really very, uh, very much designed as a, as a leaf shape mimic in the way that it sits. So clearly designed for camouflage uh, as it sits among the foliage. Um, and again, the, the male and the female are completely different as you can see on the top. But just draw your attention to that I have not got the labeling wrong. It's the female that is the bright blue one with the white stripes. 
Um, and it's the male that, that's the dull browns and oranges. And that, um, moving on now to the, um, the other uh, forester family, the Euphedras, the, the upper wing patterns of many of them are the same general pattern to the Biberia I just showed you with the general blue with, with, with white stripes across. Um, but it's the undersides of many of these foresters that are absolutely fascinating. And I'll, I'll show you a series now with, with, with different pink undersides. So, so this is Zippity, uh, the, the common pink forester. And you can see the, 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 the pink extending over large parts of the, of the underwing there. But as I move to Hebe's here, the Hebe's pink forest, so you'll see that that pink is so much more intense uh, and also completely fills in almost all of this area uh, of the underwing. Really quite a striking butterfly and, and, and you know, very bold markings round about that. In contrast, the diffuser, the next one, um, that same deep pink has such shrunk back to the central portion and all those dark markings have gone from the underside of, of both wings. And then taking it one step further, in Annam, the unmarked forester, the pink has all gone, but so has all the dark marks and we're just left with these white stripes. The upper sides of these are all essentially very, very similar. It's the undersides that, that's distinguishing them. But, then you come across something like this, uh, and wow, the the intensity of pink on the underside of that it's 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 like a you know a really gaudy pink lipstick stripe that's been painted across the underside there, and you see that that now we've moved to an a, a ground color that's essentially yellow underneath, but the, with these wonderful blue markings, blue background to the to the to the marginal areas of the wings, so overall really a stunning butterfly. This is Euphedra crocari. Um, only outdone by Euphedra genetta, um, where the pink is now confined to these areas of, of both the, the hind wing, but also now on the fore wing. But the, the, the yellow is now really deep in color, uh, and, and the blue is deeper in color. Uh, and not only is, is the yellow deeper on the underside, it's now come through to the top side of the butterfly. Uh, and this is the only one of the ephedras where, where we've got yellow boldly on, on the top side rather than pale and cream. Just, just mind bogglingly nice. There are, you know, euphedra species without any pink on them. And, and just very quickly, this, this is series and, and just true that there can be quite different, quite big differences between males and females uh, in some of these species. The male here has these, these, these eye spots. This looks like a face looking at you here with, with, with the eye spots. Um, and the, um, this has got a, quite a strong gold, yellowy gold ground color sort of coming through to the gold of the stripe in the forewing. The female, in contrast, has no yellow gold coloring at all. Again, completely white on the top and, and this, this sort of beige with purpley hints coming through on the underside. So strikingly different and, and all really attractive in their own way. But then we get to the, the really gaudy um, and this vermilion forester, still a euphedra, same family, um, is just so bright. Um, in, in the sunshine, it, it is the most stunning butterfly and that really black border with the white dots, uh, both top side and underside, contrasts so well with the, that really bright uh, orange uh, of, the, of the, the central parts of the wings. Just a, a stunning butterfly, the, the vermilion forester. And just toning down the colors a little, the, the green orange forester, that same general pattern, uh, but the orange isn't nearly so bright. Uh, and the black isn't black on the underside, it is on the top, but on the underside, it's this, it's this, this sort of greeny color. Um, so very, very similar design of butterfly, but just with less intense coloring, but still nonetheless incredibly attractive. And there are so many Euphedras, it's very hard to come up with a favorite, but this, this is certainly one of my favorites. And all of a sudden we've got a different upper side to the wings. Um, compared to, to many of the others. And this particular butterfly 
Edwardsii. It's a little bit bigger than many of the others, but that upper side has such, in the, in the sun, there's a real sheen to all those colors and it glows at you. Um, and so the underside is lovely, but but not special in that regard, but just the, 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 the to me, there's just something about the, the top side of that butterfly that I find irresistible. And there's still more euphedras. Uh, this, we've gone away from the pinks and the oranges, and we're now on to a, sort of a really deep, uh, I can't find the right word to describe the red here, uh, crimson, I suppose, um, uh, predominantly on, on the hind wing, but spreading a little bit onto the, onto the fore wing. Uh, but again, that pattern of, of broad black border with the, the ring of white dots, uh, not the same on the top side, um, but, you know, sim similar uh, arrangement. But uh, again, just coming across these things in, in the field, it, it's just, oh, it just gives you such a thrill. And finally, the last of the Euphedras I'll share with you. Um, this is the biggest of them all, 10 centimeter wingspan, uh, the blue banded forester. Um, unlike all the others, the underside of this one is designed for camouflage. It, essentially, it's just pale green with, with very pale other markings. Uh, the top sides, as you can see, are generally dark, but, but the, uh, these blue bands are, you know, they, 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 they're not quite iridescent, but they're, they're, there's a quality to them that really makes them shine uh, in, in the right lighting conditions. So just conscious of time, I need to move on quickly here. So um, the, the next family I'll show you just a handful of are, are the Acreas. I mentioned them earlier. They have very long forewings. wings. Uh, they're predominantly African and also a bit of Asian distribution. Uh, Characterized by, by a couple of things, very attractive under, under wing patterns, often sitting like that with their wings closed. But many of them also have transparent patches in their wings. And, and as you can see here in this one called Translucida, uh, Translucent Acrea, this completely transparent patch here. Um, unfortunately, this one just chose to, to, to sweat the, the, suck the sweat out of somebody's rucksack straps um, rather than sit somewhere more photogenic. The, uh, the acrea, the common glassy acrea, acrea on the right here, the four wings are almost completely transparent. Uh, and then what you're seeing there is coming through from the, 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 the color of, of, of the hind wings. Um, in contrast, our cyope on the left, uh, the, uh, there is no transparent patches on that, but still a, a really attractive underwing pattern. So you're obviously familiar with our red admiral. Uh, this is the orange admiral. Um, sits, uh, you know, it's absolutely gorgeous, gaudy colours, uh, really bright. It's it's about the size of a small flotter shell, rather, rather, so smaller than our Red Admiral, but it, but that that lovely underwing pattern uh, and sitting with its wings that way, you can really see the tails. I think the tails are a bit damaged on on, on the, the specimen above, um, but but a really fascinating uh, insect to look at. And also, I mean, looking a bit like our small tortoise shell, this is the pirate. Um, so again, really bright markings here, um, uh, but much duller underside pattern, uh, probably designed just to, to blend in a bit more with, with, with the scenery around about. But this was one of the most striking butterflies we saw uh, on, on the holiday. Um, the photographs don't quite do it justice, uh, unfortunately. Um, a, it's big, so the wingspan's up to nine centimeters, um, but the wings are very broad, so it, it just gives you the impression of being a really big insect. Um, of course, our eyes do a tremendous job at dealing with, with, ref, with, with reflective colors. Uh, unfortunately, camera sensors haven't quite got to the, the level of matching our eyes yet, and so I, I, I really struggled to get a photograph that properly reflected the, just the beauty of the top side of this insect. So th this photograph goes some way towards it, but, but really doesn't, doesn't quite do it justice. So I hope you get a feel for just how, how impressive this, the, the, this insect is, just stunning. Very quickly, um, this family, the, the pansies are again common throughout Africa and Asia. This golden pansy, I suppose, it, in, in many ways, it reminded me of just the appearance and behavior of, of a com, one of our commas, similar sort of size. I must say that the underwing pattern is different from us. In contrast, this dark blue pansy, um, 
look at those eye spots on the hind wings. Uh, I guess this this is probably in the same as, as our peacock with the idea of, of that the, with wings opening to deter a predator, the, the wings opening and those blue eye spots suddenly appearing in front of a predator uh, to, to deter them. This little chap was lovely. Um, Jononia Sophia, the little Commodore. Um, delightful little thing, but I was particularly taken just with the, the, that beautiful pattern on the underside. Um, pale, delicate markings, but that, that mix of lines and dots and, and, and dark orange at the front and pale orange around the outside. It, 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 the whole thing just, uh, I, I, I fell in love with that one. This, this African leaf butterfly was one that we only saw once on the holiday. Um, it's its name from, from being a leaf shape. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't quite get low enough to, to show you it straight on because there was a leaf in the way, surprise, surprise. Um, but the uh, as it was sitting there, it began to flex its wings just once or twice. And I was able to just catch a photo with the wings opening. So you can see just how different the, the upper wing pattern is. So I think this is a butterfly that's probably longer than it is broad. So a wingspan of 65 millimetres really doesn't do it justice because I think its length is about 90. Now this was again one of the most stunning sights that, that you can see in, in the butterfly world. Without, without the sun on it, this is a dull grey butterfly. You put the, the, the correct lighting conditions on it and all of a sudden you've got this beautiful lilac iridescence. Uh, so th this is the uh, the mother of pearl is the English name for it, uh, and and it just absolutely phenomenal to, to to see this appear. I mean, why why it does this? You know, we can only conjecture. Um, what the advantage of the butterfly of that in 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 the, in the world is, who knows? But it, if its if its purpose is just to give us pleasure, it succeeds. Quickly, the the end the last few of the, the nymphalids are, are the browns. They can't compete in terms of color and patterns. Um, but but this, this African palm fly, you know, uh, is, is, is not shabby at all, is it? What with a detailed underwing pattern that, that that insect has. Just just delightful. We never saw the top side, so I I I, I don't know what it looks like on, on the upper side. We saw a couple of these uh, called evening browns. Um, obviously we saw them throughout the day, not in the evening. But I was struck, just look at the camouflage that, that these underswing patterns give these insects. Look at the one on the right. It, it's on a sandy path uh, and, and it absolutely matches it completely. The one on the left is on something a bit more gritty. Um, and, and again, it, it, it just blends in beautifully. Just, just really quite staggering uh, the, the way these have evolved uh, to, to almost to match these man-made habitats. There were many ringlet type butterflies. Um, show you just a couple of examples. Uh, the the grey bush bone on the left there was 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 really quite a small one, uh, ranging to the the stately bush bone on the right there, which is almost twice the size. Um, but were really bold and striking patterns on on the underwings there. So finally, just a couple of skippers to show with you. Um, there are lots of species in Ghana, uh, but again, most of them are in open habitats rather than in forests. Um, we saw more than we could photograph um, because they zip around, um, but we did eventually identify 15, and I'll just show you two or three. Um, the first one uh, on the left here, uh, the common white dart, is uh, it's attractive to look at, but I thought I was seeing a damaged butterfly. I, don't, I hope you can see here that, that this looks really very strange in this central part of, of the hind wing here. Then I realized that that's actually a transparent patch in the wing. Uh, and when I was able to check the reference books and, and, and also other photographs that other people had, then, then yes, th this is not a damaged butterfly. This is the way it actually is. Um, and so, and I mean, I've shown you transparent patches on, on, on some of the acreas and, and we're familiar with, with that on some other butterfly species, but I, it's new to me to see that, 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 that evolving in, in any of the skippers. Uh, the, the striped policeman was uh, really chunky. He's 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 a big heavy beast, but again, we only saw him down taking. Uh, uh, he's either feeding from the crab or from the salts next to the crab. It was rather difficult to to distinguish. These two go by the 
English names of, of missiles. Uh, so again, very clear indication of what their behavior is like in the sunshine. Um, nice, nice, lovely dotted pattern on, on the common missile on the left. The, the snowy missile, I was particularly taken, but you can see where the name comes from. But look at those white clubs on the antennae uh, and, and a white tip to the abdomen. Uh, and, and there's also a white dusting all over the underwings. Orange skippers, a bit like our own orange ones, although these ones are, are rather smaller. Um, a range of Osmides species differing in, in, just in, in, the, in the white spots underneath. Now, well, now we have a silver spotted skipper where, where the spotting is slightly different, but this concept of an orange skipper with, with, with white dots underneath is, uh, it, it, it is not unusual. The butterfly, the butterfly on the right here, the orange sprite, has you know, really gaudy colours. It, it, you know, it's one of the skippers that sits with its wings open, unlike the grass skippers I've just been showing you. Um, but the colours here were just so striking, but unfortunately it chose to be sitting in this pink flower where the colours clash terribly, um, which is unfortunate. But unfortunately, the, the, the butterfly has never moved. Um, so we couldn't, and, and it's so far into the flower, we couldn't see whether it was still feeding from inside the flower or was resting there or whether uh, there was something more subtle there in fact a, whether a spider was holding it in there i hope that wasn't the case um, but we'll never know because we, we, we that was the only place we saw it i include this species simply because the, the, i find it unusual in that the the patterning of white dots on the wings on, was in, exactly matched on the underside as well as the top side, uh, which, which is, is, is quite unusual in the, in the, in the way that, uh, that butterfly patterns uh, have evolved. And finally, those of you who are familiar with European butterflies will recognize this as a marbled skipper. Um, this is the African marbled skipper. It's, uh, you know, it's unmistakably a, a, a marble skipper in its design. It's very reminiscent of, of, of the European uh, marble skippers, but really a, love, really a lovely little insight. And uh, there we have it. Um, that's the end of my um, rather rapid and hurried uh, wander through the, uh, the highlights of, of, of a two week trip to Ghana uh, just overwhelmed with the, the, the beauty and variety of the butterflies that were on offer there. So I, I hope you find it entertaining and interesting, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Well, Ian, that's just amazing. I lost for words at uh, some of those images. They're absolutely fantastic. I can't imagine how you managed to drag yourself back home again after all that lot. It must have been a a, a, a tall, tall order indeed, but um, it's a hard act. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we start, um, I'm going to um, allow people to, um, to 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 unmute themselves again now, and you can um, take o open your cameras as well if um, if if you like. But while while people are doing that, can I just ask a little bit about? Um, the status of butterflies in Ghana. I, I've, I've got a video of Ghanan butterflies about 25 years old, made by Robert Banks, which um, bemoans the huge destruction that had taken place in the country over the previous few decades and how large amounts of land had been lost to um, forest clearance and the like. I mean, what, what's your take on things now? Is, 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 is this, the country still being ravaged by development or are, are butterfly areas protected or how, 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 how how's things do? I mean, I'm, probably an unfair question as you've only been there for a couple of weeks, but uh, just interested in your, your sort of perceptions. I don't think there's enough protection. You know, I, I, I think what you've just described is, is happening all over the world. Ghana is no different. You know, people aspire yeah, to, to, to a higher quality of life and, and that we, we use up more land in the process. Uh, and so there's a lot of timber removal um, for, you know, for, for human development and human activity. Um, so there are very few areas that are protected. Uh, and I don't think there are that it, not yet enough um, awareness of just how special Ghana is 
in terms of its it, the biodiversity that it holds. That said, as I say, particularly around the Bobery um, Butterfly Sanctuary, that has a, a renowned international reputation, understandably. Um, and obviously, the, the the guys that we were working with from from the, the local tour company um, are doing everything they can to promote uh, protection. Uh, of of the butterflies and, and the habitats, obviously, that the butterflies rely on. But as you say, it's very difficult to give a give a complete answer just based on a, sure. a quick two week holiday. Yes, yes. Right. Has it, has anybody else um, got a, a question which they'd like to uh, to ask Ian? Uh, Roger, go um, go ahead. I'm sort of looking at it from the perspective of the commonality uh, crossover between these species and European species. And there were only four that struck me. Um, one of your Caraxes is very similar to the two-tailed pasha, certainly on the underside. Um, the snout butterflies, the nettle tree butterfly is, is called beak butterfly, um, but we never see them in those sort of numbers. Um, and the nectis gliders are common in Europe. But the one that struck me was um, what I think was called common zebra blue which is yep. uh, in Europe is um, Lang short tail blue, the same um, scientific name, but it looked completely different. <laughs> How interesting. Yeah. So I'll, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't picked that up. I'll, I'll need to thank you for raising that because I certainly I, the Latin names that I'm going by are, are from the the reference text on gamma butterflies and and so i i've taken that as gospel without questioning anything i was picking up you know but uh that that, that that's certainly an interesting question um and it may it's, well be that we've got you know that it is the same butterfly you know uh, and and if it's the same latin name it certainly ought to be the same butterfly i, I don't know I, I i really don't know it's the same scientific name leptotes piritus in, in europe i mean they're they're quite common in southern France, Indeed. but they, they're not nowhere near that contrasted. It's more grey and dark. Right. So per perhaps it's it's it, it, you know like many perhaps it's a local race of the same species. Who knows? You know. Um, I mean, it, perhaps there is a you know a, a, a further qualification of the Latin name that I, that I haven't been able to sort of pick up on. I imagine your only disappointment was you didn't get Dingy Skipper, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, Brian, you you had a question. Yeah, I uh, like that Roger said that uh, the snout butterflies or the beak butterflies are don't occur in big numbers in in Europe, and we know they occur in good numbers in um, in Africa certainly, but uh, in the west southwestern United States sometimes they occur in such numbers that people have to turn on the city lights during the day to see because of the clouds of millions of snout butterflies that are flying by. My, my question is though, did you see amongst all the snout butterflies, the beaks and the, and the flip-flops and the on-offs and all those butterflies with the great names, did you see any examples of birds predating adult butterflies? The, the easy answer to that question, Brian, is no, because believe it or not, we saw hardly any birds. Really? Wow. Absolutely. We were staggered at how few birds we saw. Um, whether it's just a time of year thing uh, in, in the habitats that we were at, it's, it's very difficult for us to know. Um, because you know, Ghana is very good for birding, and certainly some of the, the sites we were, we were visiting are known as, 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 as good good for birds as well but uh, we saw whether it's just that we weren't out early enough in the morning but that said we were we were essentially out from pretty much after first light uh, just having a wander around before breakfast um, and at no point even even though we were seeing birds at that time of day uh, at no point were we seeing them at taking butterflies now I suppose the caveat to that is that there were, although we saw few birds, we could hear bird song, and so an awful lot of it's up in the canopy. Yes. And so whether whether there are bird, still butterflies up in the canopy that are being predated by those birds, I I can't, or, or just or there's just so many, just so many other insects right. <laughs> that the birds can go right. for. So yeah. so my history with 
my history with butterflies and, and bird predation and all the theories around the markings on the underside of the wings or the top side of the wings or the orange coloration or the bright coloration, I've, I, have, uh, I haven't seen a single bird approach and try to catch an adult butterfly in Massachusetts in 20 years. Not a single one. And I've been in fields. I was in a field once with 100,000 cabbage whites flying around, your small white. And I've been in field with thousands of sulfurs and no birds take any interest in them whatsoever. They eat the moths and they don't eat the butterflies. And so I just, you know, I wanted to, I, I really wanted you to say no, <laughs> I didn't see any. And uh, sorry, there weren't any birds, but, but thanks for the answer. <laughs> well, you got, you, you got the right answer for the wrong yeah. reason. All right. Anybody else uh, fancy a question? I don't know if, if, yeah. if there's a, anyone that's, um, uh, someone's in the chat. Right. Uh, no. If I, I don't know if any, if any, if people are struggling to, um, to unmute, then um, please put, put a question in the chat if you want to. Ian, um, did you have any butterflies land on you? Um, one or two, um, but but no, I, I I I've included one or two photos of, of things on on a shirt or on or on a, you know, on somebody's boot. But they didn't land on your face and try to. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Um, I mean, I, I I've had that in the UK, but but surprisingly not there. So yeah, all right. But that said, we were you know for obvious reasons we were we were covered in suntan lotion and and insect repellent. Oh, you know, good. You know, so in good. that sense, I'm really quite relieved that they, me too. Know, they, weren't, land, they weren't landing and, and, and essentially getting poisoned by the Me too, me too. Great. So, okay, well, look, um, unless anyone else has um, thought of a question, um, then um, I suppose it leads me to um, say thanks very much to Ian and uh, really amazing talk and... Um, we haven't, haven't got our biggest audience today, but uh, it's uh, it's those, those that have uh, tuned in have certainly got their money's worth. That, that was absolutely fantastic. I think it I've was ever amazing. Seen. Thanks, thanks very much, Ian. It was really good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and um, we'll look forward to um, seeing some of you at, at our um, our next talk, which um, I forget exactly who. <laughs> Who's talking or when? I'm sure there'll be an email comes round, or this this yeah, may be able to with us. A second list, so. <laughs> Just hope it's several weeks after that one, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> where are you get? Where are you going for holiday uh, this year, Ian? Um, I, I'm off to the Chiapas region of Mexico in a month's time. Wow! Okay. Taking your camera. Taking your um, camera. I hope. Oh yeah. <laughs> Malcolm, the next meeting is Wednesday, the 1st of February, which is Roger talking about the UK species you won't see in Hertfordshire or Middlesex, followed by Tuesday, Big City Butterflies project update on the 21st Excellent. of February. Great. OK, well, we'll look forward, look forward to those as well. Great. Um, there's right, well, just, for Ian, just before you go, there's just a few comments coming through in at the bottom saying thank you very much and how marvellous they were there's quite a few things in the chat room for you to read okay i'll do that now thank you lovely all right well thanks ever so much for tuning in and we'll um, thank you. see you all next really time lovely. yeah thanks for that. Take bye. Care. Bye, bye 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 everyone thank you <laughs>